If you're considering installing solar panels on your home in Florida, then stop right there. I want you to watch this video first because I'm gonna be teaching you six key factors that you need to consider before installing solar in Florida. Also, make sure you watch to the end because I'm gonna be giving you my recommendation of some of the best equipment to use for the Florida environment. The smarter way to go solar. All right, now in today's video, we're talking about the Florida Solar Program in 2025 and really how to make sure you're getting the best out of your solar investment if you choose to go solar in Florida. Now, the first thing that you wanna make sure you take advantage of is the solar net metering program. Now, when we talk about a net metering program, what we mean is that essentially your relationship with the power company becomes a two-way relationship where you can trade energy, buy and sell back and forth. Now, during daylight hours, you can directly power the house using solar power, and you can send all of your excess electricity back to the power company, earning credits on your account, earning credits on your meter. So that then during the evening hours, you can pull energy back in from the power company using the credits that you built up during daylight hours. And if the system is designed properly, it'll net out or it'll balance out to zero. Now, this works great if you have a one-for-one -one net metering program, meaning that for every one kilowatt hour of electricity you send them during the daytime, you can pull one kilowatt hour back in the evening with no penalty. And, and there's many utilities in Florida that are still offering the one-for-one -one net metering, like Florida Power and Light, Tico, uh, LCEC, uh, they all have one-for-one -one net metering programs. But some of the utilities like Duke Energy and some of the local co-ops are no longer giving you a full one-for-one -one credit. And so that means that in some cases you may have to send them, let's say two kilowatt hours in the daytime for every one that you get to pull back. But if you live in an area with a utility that offers the one-for-one -one net metering, this would be one of the best times to go solar because you're gonna get the best dollar-for-dollar -dollar return on investment. Now, for those of you who don't have a one-for-one -one net metering program, you may want to consider installing battery storage with your solar. So that's the second major thing you need to consider is do I need to install battery storage with my solar power system? Now there's two main reasons you, you would install batteries with your solar. The first we already touched on, which is that your power company doesn't offer one-for-one -one net metering. So in order to get the best payback for solar, you need to be able to store your excess daytime solar energy production so that you can consume that energy within your house at nighttime. That way you don't have to worry about buying and selling and trading back and forth with the power company. If they're not gonna give you a fair rate for the, the electricity that you send them, the alternative is to charge it into your own battery and then run the home off the battery during the evening hours. Now the other reason you would install battery storage is for emergency backup power. And I know many of you watching this in Florida, you're concerned about natural disasters and hurricanes, and you wanna have secure backup power for your home. Now, if you install solar panels by themselves, if the power goes out, even if it's daylight hours, most solar power systems will just shut down and wait until the grid comes back up with a stable signal. But if you install battery storage with your solar, uh, especially with some of the newer whole home battery backup solutions, uh, it will allow you to run your solar panels day and night even in a prolonged grid down situation, which means that you can run the home off of solar panels during the daytime, you can charge your batteries during the daytime, then you can run the home off of battery power overnight, and then the next day the solar panels take over and recharge the battery. And you can repeat that cycle day after day after day, even if you have to during a prolonged outage. So this is another reason to install battery storage with your solar. Now, if you are gonna install batteries in Florida, and you're looking for a true whole house backup, the two systems that I recommend are the Franklin Whole Home Battery System uh, and the Point Guard Home Battery System. Uh, and the reason that I, I recommend those two is because those two solutions give you enough power output and storage capacity to have a true whole house backup, including running heavy loads like central air conditioning overnight. And I know many of you in Florida, because of the high heat and humidity, you really do need air conditioning as a critical item. It's not really a nice to have, it's, it's a must have for many of you to prevent you know, over moisture and mold damage to your home. So I recommend Point Guard and the Franklin Whole Home Battery System uh, as high capacity batteries that can provide you a legitimate whole house backup in Florida. Uh, if you're gonna go with the Franklin battery system, I recommend you go with two batteries or more for the whole house backup. Now, the third thing to consider in Florida is the higher wind rating 
that buildings need to be built to and solar systems need to be built to. Um, especially if we're looking at coastal Florida, coastal South Florida, Miami area, the homes there have to be built to a higher wind rating than inland homes or standard homes in other part of the country. And that means that when you install solar panels on your home, the solar panel installation also has to be built to a higher wind rating. And so using a solar panel and using a solar panel racking system that allows you to achieve these higher wind ratings is important. Um, many of you watching, you may have to build to 130 mile per hour or more wind rating. And so going with a strong, durable solar panel with a reinforced frame may be a good fit for your area. And you know, I, I should mention here as well, because I get the question sometimes, will solar panels get ripped off my roof or if there's a hurricane, will the solar panels be able to stand up? And the answer is, if the solar panels are engineered and installed properly, they will stay on the roof so long as the roof stays on the house. Because again, the solar panel installation has to meet the same building code as the house, as the roof itself. Now the fourth thing you need to consider in Florida is the extreme high rooftop temperatures that you're likely to see for much of the spring and summer months in Florida. You know, solar panels, just like a lot of other electrical equipment, when it has to operate at extreme high temperatures, the efficiency of the solar panels goes down. And so when solar panels are tested in the laboratory, they're tested at what's called STC, standard test conditions, which is about 77 degrees Fahrenheit, about a comfortable indoor room temperature. But in the real world, the solar panels are almost never operating at that ideal temperature. And so in Florida, for example, it's not uncommon to see rooftop temperatures of 150, 160 degrees Fahrenheit or more. Solar panels are rated with what's called a temperature coefficient. And a, the temperature coefficient is the percentage of production that is lost for each degree Celsius that the panel has to operate above the ideal temperature. And so if you install a solar panel that has a low temperature coefficient, it means you're going to have less efficiency loss when those solar panels heat up, which just translates to more total usable energy over the lifetime of the system, or another way to think of it is, you know, more payback on your solar investment over the lifetime of the system. And that's actually a great time to introduce today's video sponsor, REC. If you're looking to get the maximum performance for your residential solar and battery storage system, then you need to take a look at the new REC Alpha Pure RX solar modules. REC solar cells are built using heterojunction technology, which is a combination of crystalline silicon and amorphous or thin film silicon. The result is a solar module with extremely high efficiency and industry low degradation rate all while remaining price competitive. The low temperature coefficient and extra horizontal supports keeps the solar panel performing near peak power even in extreme weather conditions. REC stands behind its award-winning modules with a 25-year ProTrust warranty that covers power, product, and labor. So if you're serious about becoming energy independent and you want to get the best performance from your solar array, then tell your installer to use REC Alpha Pure RX. The 450 and 460 watt modules are available now at your local solar distributor. Thank you REC for supporting the channel and for sponsoring today's video. You know, one of the nice things about the REC Alpha Pure RX panel, which is this year's top residential panel, is that it's got that lower temperature coefficient and it's reinforced by dual crossbars in the back. So it's a, it's a stronger frame, even though the solar panel frame is not that heavier or thicker, it does allow you to achieve a higher wind rating as well. So great for the Florida environment. Now, the fifth factor you need to consider is changes to your homeowner's insurance coverage. Now, unfortunately in Florida, a lot of out-of-state solar companies came in a few years ago, and many of them did a lot of quick and dirty work. Many of them caused a number of roof leaks and in a small handful of cases, some electrical fires as well. Uh, and as a result, some of the homeowner's insurance carriers in Florida stopped providing coverage to some of these homeowners. In fact, it became a major talking point at the Florida Homeowners Insurance Conference of just how much damage and how much risk an improper solar installation could introduce. So some insurance carriers are a little bit skittish about covering a home with a solar power installation. So make sure that you talk to your insurance agent if you're planning on installing solar or batteries 
find out if there are any changes needed to your coverage, uh, or if you might want to switch carriers to a more solar friendly carrier. And then finally, number six are the homeowners association restrictions. Now, Florida is a solar access rights state, meaning that the state law actually protects your right to access solar power for your home. So if you live in a community with a homeowners association or a property owners association, they are not allowed to ban you or to prevent you from installing solar panels. Uh, they can provide some, some basic guidance on where the solar panels should be placed. But if, if the desired placement from the HOA would negatively degrade the solar panel performance from its optimal potential, um, there are limits to how much they can provide guidance on the positioning as well. Now the relevant code here is Florida Statute 163.04, which we can put a link there for you if you'd like to learn more. But all in all, Florida is a very solar friendly state. You've got net metering in most of the state, you've got solar access laws, uh, and of course, because of the environment in Florida, you're gonna have long sunny days for lots of the year, which means that panels installed in Florida are gonna produce significantly more than panels installed on the same home, say, in, in the Northeast. So this has been an update on the Florida Solar Program for 2025. Again, definitely if you're interested, make sure that you lock in a net metering agreement. If you're in an area where you can get a one-for-one -one net metering agreement, that's gonna give you the absolute best payback for your solar. And then of course, consider installing battery storage if you wanna be truly energy independent and have the ability to survive a prolonged grid down event, uh, if that's what you're looking for. Uh, folks, as always, if you're getting good value from these videos you watch on Solar Surge, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Uh, also, go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this coming out, it'll come up on your recommendations so you can stay up to date with everything. Now, of course, if you're a homeowner and if you're in the process of looking at different solar and battery storage options for your home, uh, if you need to get a price quote, or maybe if you already have a quote and you need to get a comparison to make sure that you're getting the right equipment or the best deal, uh, as always, you can feel free to reach out to us on the link below here. Set up a call with a solar surge expert uh, or just use the free online calculator tool so you can see how much solar and battery storage costs in your area. Well, that does it for today's presentation. I thank you all for spending some more time on the solar surge channel. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.